<laughs> Pagula on the attack mid court. First forehand from Sabalenka is brutal, and Pagula can't pick it over the net. Sabalenka raises her hands. She only needed the one championship point. Job done, as Shawna saying in the chat. She is the 2024 Cincinnati champion. And maybe, just maybe, no, not even that, maybe to be honest, she is now the red hot favorite for the US Open. What a performance all week. I don't think she's dropped a set. She didn't look like losing to anyone. And credit Jessica Pagula for making it a little bit of a contest and keeping it to a break per set. But let's face it, there was no one winning in Cincinnati other than Maria Sabalenka this week, Miles. With those core conditions and the way she was able to play controlled aggression for a week and a half or so in Cincinnati, like you said, she makes herself a clear favorite in New York, having made the final just last year, enjoying the atmosphere of New York. She is one to beat. If she can keep it together like she kept it together in this final, even when Pagula pushed back, yeah. If I'm making my draw, she's 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 in championship weekend. I, you would put her in the championship weekend for pretty much any slam at the minute. I mean, she's super consistent across, uh, like, all the slams, as we know. Like, I think only the shoulder injury stopped her from making the French. I don't want to put down Andreva's performance, but I think Sabalenka's problem gave her an opening. Um but yeah, I would say I would agree with you. Like anyway, like I would, you would be foolish not to put her in your final four for any slam. And then the question is, well, then does she go on and win it? And um, at the US Open, uh, there aren't any. Cl- I think that Sviantek is going to be breathing down her neck. Mm-hmm. But absolutely. She, but Sabalenka is going to be the one that everyone's going to be watching to see how serene her progress is. Of course, this is Arena Sabalenka, not Serena, as Jessica Pagula thought. <laughs> is that what Jessica Pagula thought? Maybe she felt like she was playing her today. Who knows? Did you that, not see a great her, question. her first interview in the semifinals? No. What did she say? I didn't so, see that. So Pagula misheard the interviewer. So, um, like, she was like, so she beat Badossa, and the interviewer was like, so you're playing Arena in the next in the final, and. Pagula, Jesse misheard her and thought she said Serena and did a double take. <laughs> I was like, wait, I'm oh. playing Serena in the final? <laughs> well, she is one of the few people that knows what that feeling feels like. She she lost to Serena in a 2020 final. So she's actually the, the last person to, to lose to Serena in a WTA final, right? Yeah. yeah. Not bad. Lost- something, something to tell your grandparents about. <laughs> I mean, yeah. to your grandchildren, <laughs> your grandchildren. I was the last person. To be, yeah, because that, that was Auckland 2021 or 2020? 2020, pre-pandemic. We hadn't realized how crazy the world could get when Serena won that title in Auckland yet. Okay, so Serena never won a title post-pandemic. No. Shame. Um we have plenty. Uh, we have plenty to look through, though. I think the Serena Williams fans just uploaded like a whole 12-minute compilation the other day of pure return winners against Sharapova serve, which I couldn't have watched that if I was... I, I can't imagine Sharapova experiencing that, just the ball whizzing by her every time she served. <laughs> by, by the way, um, I know you were talking... This is not a mass, massive tangent, but like that that Serena show that they're doing at the minute, because obviously it's 25 years since she won the US Open. Mm-hmm. It's not available in the UK, which is a shame because I would have been really interested in watching that. That's so strange that it's not because it's on a streaming platform. You could, you could literally... Which you could literally just purchase ESPN Plus. Like it doesn't. It shouldn't matter where you are in the world. Like you having you having to. Like can't you watch Netflix anywhere in the world? Like what I watch on Netflix is relatively what you can watch on Netflix. It's, so it, no, it does. It does vary what country you're in. Oh, boo! The powers <laughs> that be. Boo! The powers that be. But it's a really really good show. Small plug. I have been doing uh, a series recapping what's what's been revealed in ESPN's in the arena docu-series featuring Serena Williams. So if you're not subscribed to Tuned Into Tennis, make sure you do that. I'm trying to hit 500K. Me and Talking Tennis, the team at Talking Tennis, I love I love doing this. But, you know, if you're ever looking for an extra tidbit of tennis information, check out Tuned Into Tennis. We appreciate it. Love it. Um, so, uh, by the way, um, I think Nolan asked a question about who Sabalenka lost to at Wimbledon. She didn't play. She was injured. So... And, you know, I think someone else in the chat made a uh, a point that 
Sabalenka probably could have won Wimbledon if she played it, if she was fully fit. Because, I mean, maybe Krajikova could have sprung a surprise uh, in a final or something. But where is I mean, Krajikova probably feels like she's still on cloud nine because she probably didn't expect to be a Wimbledon champion. But as far as her U.S. Open lead up, is she has she played anything? No, she hasn't. Uh, I think she played okay. the Olympics, so but I don't think she played Toronto or Cincinnati. And she's going to be seeded eight at the U.S. Open anyway. Maybe she felt mm -hmm. like it, she, doing... she didn't medal anywhere at the Olympics, did she? She got no she didn't medal in doubles. She, she, she went out like she, I think she lost to she lost to Schmeichlover in the mm. last 16 in the singles and then she went out to the Andreva Schneider combo in the women's doubles in the quarters with Sinyakova. <laughs> Swanna, that's a good one. Krajika was playing pickleball this week. A lot of tennis players are playing pickleball. Not my favorite thing to play, but you know. It's clear that Krajika has decided, like Sakari, to just go into the Olymp Olympics to the US Open as fresh as possible. She has nothing to defend. Um, Krajikova may have lost first round of US Open last year to or thereabouts. I know Sakari lost first round because there was this drama with her smelling cannabis or something of that sort uh, on the back on the back courts. But uh, neither of them have nothing nothing to defend. So I guess they feel like, hey, it's the last Grand Slam of the season. Let's go in there and play the kind of tennis that I know I can. If it does, if it works out great. If it doesn't, then it's been a pretty good season for me all around. I guess. You guys don't remember when Sakari was complaining that some of the courts at the U.S. Open smelled like marijuana? I remember that. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, no, that was, uh, that was, I mean, look, it's a good thing they don't play tennis near where I live. That's all I'm going to say. Um, <laughs> Same. <laughs> um, okay. Um yeah, can't, uh, uh, yeah, I don't know, uh, yeah, the other line I'm seeing your messages, I'm sorry, I don't know how that's going to work, um, if you are being genuine. Um, is Kanta the one that did the, the call for you? Like, is it Sky Sports, Nick? Uh, I don't know, because I'm not listening to it. Oh, I wasn't listening to it, but I thought you saw her face. I thought you said Kanta. Did you say Kanta? Or I no, no. Up? Talking, no, no. Um, no, oh, I think sorry. Naomi Brody, um, mainly. Um, huh. Naomi, Naomi Brody, who, who is an excellent, I mean, Joe Conta, Naomi Brody, and um, uh, Laura Robson, all excellent commentators, like probably the three best commentators in the world right now um, mm -hmm. on British tennis and British um, channel. Anyway. Right. Let's get back to the match because we've gone well off topic. A little bit. This happens sometimes with us, um, especially when you get me and Miles in the room. Um, <laughs> they're doing the uh, presentation ceremony uh, right now. The umpire is getting his memento. Um, yet another one. Um, so yeah. Can I um, can I tangent really quickly? Just really quickly. I wonder what the sure. the chair umpires do with with those little mementos that they like. Like do do they have, do they have their own trophy cabinet that we don't know about or people don't really inquire about? Because they always get included in these. Trophy ceremonies. <laughs> I mean, if I was an umpire, I would. Yeah. 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 So thoughts on, I think, let's let's do the people who are kind of coming up. Because um, I think Pagula is going to be giving her speech. Um, Jessica Pagula, thoughts on her performance today? I know we kind of saying about maybe uh, she maybe not ha didn't have a lot uh, or maybe didn't have enough to beat Sabalenka, I would say she didn't have enough to beat Sabalenka, who was firing red hot today. Um, mm -hmm. But I still think she acquitted herself well. I don't yeah. know whether you're coming on that. No, I, I I do think she acquitted herself very nicely, especially when it was, you know, back against the wall, Sabalenka serving for the, the, the tournament, and she was able to squeak out a, 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 a break in that moment. She played really well all week. There were ebbs and flows in her matches, uh, but she was able to kind of steady herself out when it really mattered, especially in that semifinal against Bedosa when Bedosa stepped it up. So I think she goes into the U.S. Open with as much confidence. Actually, she should go into the U.S. Open with the most confidence she's had all year because Canada in you know, our Cincinnati final sets her up nicely, personally. And I will, I, I will hold myself to the fire if this is the case on the final Saturday or, yeah, that's the women's final on the Saturday of the U.S. Open. If Pagula's holding that trophy, hey, more power to her. That, that, that means that she has been 
further in a grand slam than she ever has and has finally won one. I just do not leave Cincinnati thinking that much changes in that regard. Is she back to like playing consistent Pagula tennis? Yes. But consistent Pagula tennis is not grand slam winning tennis to me yet. Hate to kind of be like a, you know, be sour about it, but I'm not convinced that she's broken gr new ground to become a contender at the Grand Slams. To it does me. depend on what happens in the rest of the draw, right? Yes, but we've also seen draws break for her, and she didn't come out the champion either. So I don't, I don't know. I don't. It, I, there's. I'm basing this off of not so much how I feel about Pagula, but what has Pagula shown me is that a draw she can work her way through like a tough draw for a high seed. Or a draw can break for her and she gets Von Drusseva in a Wimbledon quarterfinal and not lift the trophy or get past the quarterfinal either. So I I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, that one might go down as the uh um that one might go down as the biggest opportunity Pagula has to win a Grand Slam. Um Shauna, I'm not gonna answer your question purely because I'm doing a power ranking video. I'm probably gonna record it in the next 24 hours or so. And uh, I don't want to give anything away for it. So I will let Miles answer that one. Who's the third favorite for the U.S. Open after Sabalenka and Iga? Yeah. By the way, Sabalenka's picking up the trophy right now. She's she's not lifted above her head yet, but she's cradling in her arms like a precious child, and she's now giving her... I like Chapter. this trophy. I like this new and improved vase base that Cincinnati gives out. It's really like a it's more modern than the old one. I that's a tough question because my mind wanted to blurt out Coco or Rabakana because those are who are in the rankings after Iga and Arena Sabalenka. But I I'm gonna give it to either like Rabakana slash Coco because they are Grand Slam champions in their own right. But I think that third person could be somebody we really haven't discussed yet that kind of finds form in New York. Could it be somebody like Mukova who found themselves in the semifinal last year? Serana Kirstea found herself in a quarterfinal last year. Um, Madison Keys was in a Grand Slam semi at the U.S. Open last year. And I don't think that was on the on the, the the bucket list. Granted, she has been there before, but it may be one of those kind of players that find the form in New York that they need. So I'm not sure because because being the third best player would mean that essentially I can see them in the semifinals because that's that's one of the four players. I, they, there's there's some wiggle room for some players to kind of get in behind Iga and Arena. To me, it could be Pagula, but she hasn't been to a semifinal. I I can give you a list of players in the in my head because I haven't necessarily settled on it yet. But like list of players in my head who I think could be put at three: Coco, Elena, yeah, Jessica Pagula. Um, mm -hmm. I would include. I would think about Barbora Krajikova. I would definitely seriously think about Xiong Chin Wen, mm -hmm. and I would, th and maybe it, you could you could look at Jasmine Paolini. Um, mm -hmm. I would love that, actually. I would love yeah. if Jasmine Colony continues her Grand Slam success. Or Danielle Collins. I was going to say Danielle Collins, who's, I believe, I didn't double check this, but... She's playing uh, Monterey in the top seat. Yeah, Tennis Channel, Tennis Channel did make a commercial about uh, Monterey, and I saw her, and I was like, is she actually going to play? Because that's a, that's a little strange to go to Mexico the week before you're supposed to be in New York. But there has to be some incentive, right? Also, Donna Vekic is there because Donna Vekic is actually the defending champion, but she won it in February of last year when it was in that schedule of the season or stop. She not pulled out. Uh, I'm double checking. She was. She was also in that tennis channel commercial as like, "Hey, come watch these women in in Monterey." Um, I think Vekic is pulled out. I don't see her name, which I actually would be smart on her behalf. I know she's defending champ, but. She should be in, in New York. She should be. She's played a lot of tennis. Yeah, I don't see her name in the draw. I see Daniel Collins. I see Emma Navarro. I see Elena Svitolina. And I see uh, Ekaterina Alexandrova. Yeah, that you definitely not Vekic then, because you've gone way past where she was ranked. Yep. Um, Sean is saying that Vekic is already in New York. She, she should be. I mean, yeah, because she's Vekic is actually a, a quarterfinalist in New York. That uh, match that she played against on... Benchic? I think she lost to Benchic in the 2019 U.S. Open quarterfinals. That was kind of tight, I think. So yeah. she could have been a U.S. Open semifinalist then. So, hey. 
There's another name to throw out in the mix. Sabalenka is holding the trophy. We've had the ticker tape. We've had the photos. Like she's having all the photos taken right now. Let's go back to the Arena Sabalenka performance here before we wrap up. Um, yeah, I mean, that was an intense, powerful, unstoppable performance from Arena Sabalenka. Um, I'm kind of running out of superlatives, you can see, but like if if you're an Arena Sabalenka fan, this might be your favorite title run outside of a slam um, that she's had. Like she was just, I've said that word again, unstoppable. Mm -hmm. uh, her level of play was great. Her competition, so what she was, she was up for it from pretty much the the first ball, especially in this final. If she plays like that, like I've said in New York, then she's one to beat, and I think it does give her a lot of confidence to just physically put her hands on a trophy. In my mind, a seven month drought is not anything to be worried about. But for a lot of other commentators and tennis pundits, it was getting like, "Oh, when's Arena going to win her next title?" She does. She does it now. Sets herself up for a, a really, a really good two weeks in New York, and she is a train, a really, really strong, with, strong one with some freight on it when she's playing well like that. It takes either her to kind of derail it with, you know, maybe a, a lack in, a, a lapse of concentration or like the wrong shot choice or a really really impressive performance particularly somebody with the kind of legs that coco uh has i mean legs in the form of like covering the court like coco can do because that's really what was frustrating to sabalink in that u.s open final and there's not many players that have the legs to be able to stop a arena Sabalenka pure aggressive ground stroking game when it's on those those names are few and far between Iga has that athleticism Coco has that athleticism maybe Rabakana can go toe to toe from the ground if she's healthy and uh motivated enough maybe somebody like Paulini can scramble their way and kind of make make Sabalenka hit that extra shot and make her uncomfortable but outside Not of that yeah, Navarro showed that she could do it in Indian Wells, but I do think it would take a Sabalenka at a notch or two below the one the Sabalenka we saw in Cincinnati. But that's a good shout, Nick. It would it would it would take a combination of something like that for Navarro to be a champion. Even like somebody like Paulini, as I mentioned, a Maria Sakari. I know that sounds like a big ass because Sakari's not been a big match player lately, but yeah, if she plays similar to how she played in Cincinnati, even this this the the she got better and better each week. If she if she brings that to New York, it's going to take somebody that just relentlessly gets down to all of her balls and makes her hit an extra shot, which that list is very short. So, yeah, I I would agree. I think that's that's who she's got to worry about, and even then she has the capability of when she's on to really hit through. Like Pagula in theory has that ability to kind of come back at her and like she did her best with it today and mm -hmm. it just wasn't enough because arena was just finding ways of just overwhelming her um and yeah i guess that's that's kind of the summary of the final um really is there any i i don't know if this has been like talked about amongst tennis uh fandom yet but is there any way sabalenka leaves new york as the world number one or is no you know, i don't Iga, think so i think fiante okay. is secure because Iga does have post us open points like a wta a year in finals beijing yeah i think yeah. The, the ranking becomes more in question for the wta finals let's say uh sabalenka wins the us open she'll close the gap to Iga by a lot but mm -hmm. i'm just getting the live rankings up uh now because um, that's going to be easier to work with than the um, the, than the official ones. Because obviously we haven't factored in Arena's title yet. But obviously Arena's defending finals points from the US Open last year, so she can only gain seven hundred. Eager is defending what's a fourth, fourth round, round. Mm -hmm. two hundred and something. Yeah, um, it's a weird. The WTA ranking system is a bit odd. It's, 270, I think. So, yeah, Arena is now 2,679 points behind Eager um, going into the lives. So, they will lose Arena, even if Arena gains 700, 
even if Eager went out first round, it'll close the gap, but it wouldn't. Mm. She wouldn't overtake her. So speaking Eager's of gap, mm-hmm. speaking of gap, there's quite a large gap between what Andrew Krasny does as far as being a tennis MC and the rest of the tennis MCs that I hear throughout the year. He's always a good voice to hear in these uh, North American tournaments. Andrew Krasny, if you know, you know is a uh, frequent MC and presenter in tennis. And I like Andrew Krasny, but I cannot say that I don't want his job because I do. <laughs> hey, good job to have. ATX Open, Heil Myers, David. Hey, if you need somebody to help introduce players and facilitate a trophy presentation, I can do it. There's uh, a suit somewhere with my name you. on it. <laughs> I mean, I would love to hear you. I mean, like, there, you're right, Andrew Krasny, who also does the US Open, I think. Like, the way he introduces players, the only person who really rivals him is the guy who does them for Roland Garros. Um, mm-hmm. It's like, the, the Rafael and the Dal. Um, there was, I was listening to someone do it in a, either, it was in Canada, either, either Montreal or Toronto. It was with excitement, but it just... I, personal taste i hope he doesn't hope nobody clips this and like sends this to the guy a little bit like wwe wrestling corny yes we're like it was a little bit of that which I, if, hey if that is your taste by all means like live it up but i think there's a happy medium between like exciting or presenting somebody to a crowd with excitement and doing it in like a cheesy way there's a happy medium <laughs> i would if i was doing it i would go full wwe just want to say really it. okay okay that's fine <laughs> Hey, I mean, actually, there's, I, a, I, there's I, an audience for that. There's an audience for it. I don't think I could pull it off. I'd have to do my own kind of more excitable way of doing things, but I would be trying to hype hype up the person as much as possible. Our producer is funny. He said he would like to see it, and Halep wins the title. Believe it or not, I would have the professionalism to not let my personal uh, opinions bleed into the presentation. But you would be able, you would be able to tell. But I would know in the back of my mind. <laughs> I would know. Uh, yes. I mean, look, let's face it. No one's hiring a Serena Williams fan to go anywhere near a certain group of players. Um, I, th- so. I don't think that's fair. I don't think that's a fair. <laughs> I don't think that's a fair statement at all, actually. <laughs> <laughs> I think a lot of Serena fans are able to do a lot of different things in tennis. It's just, you know, Serena has a Serena's an icon. So that I, comes look, with I wouldn't hire an Eager Shiontek fan to go near Danielle Collins right now. Yeah, that seems a little touchy. That seems a little touchy. <laughs> but in general, a Serena fan that is healthy and has a good worldly view can introduce any player. Like Serena's is Serena, and if you beat her in the past, you beat her in the past. That's how I look at it. It's not it's not fun to watch those highlights all the time, but hey, you can't win them all. And she won she won twenty three. I don't watch. I, I don't go back and watch uh, Novak Djokovic walking over Roger Federer in an Australian Open semi final. <laughs> oh. I- I don't either. I don't either. But sometimes you, you learn a lot sometimes about watching matches in hindsight. And sometimes I definitely tip my cap to players that I wouldn't have felt like tipping my cap to at the time when I go back and just so happenstance to watch highlights or coverage of it. You know? I tell you what, our producer's going to have a horrendous time clipping this because what he th- what John likes to do is get his producers to uh, make sure that uh, the clips at the end of the show were kind of put out as separate videos to sum up the match. But we have gone in all kinds of different directions here on Talking Tennis. But hey, there you go. That's what Talking Tennis is like. We go, well, there's so many topics that we can cover. We talk tennis. We talk and tune into tennis. This is what this is what it's about. This is what sports is about. I always have said with my, with my personal platform that tennis needs more of a Buffalo Wild Wings esque aura about it just you know kind of shooting the breeze and that's when sports in general is is a uh, at its best and tennis is no different all right well i guess we're going to be shooting some breeze tennis um maybe we need to rebrand um we're going to shoot some breeze watching some tennis in about an hour or so because we've got the men's final coming up between yannick sinner and francis tiafo coming up and we'll be shooting the breeze about women's tennis some more on WTA Weekly tomorrow. Time TBC, but it'll probably be from about sort of 6 p.m. UK time onwards at the earliest. Um the I guess miles before you go, thoughts how how nervous are you ahead of this men's final um with Francis taking on Yannick? Nervous to the point where I don't know if I should be the person helping along the stream 
<laughs> sometimes I feel like I am the issue and the cause of my own player's demise. Like sometimes they win when I'm not watching. So if that happens, I tend to be mindful of that and s- just score watch instead of actually watch the match like on on uh, on on the television. And a lot of I've watched some of Tiafo's matches, but like the last one I didn't watch. So I don't know if I sit and like keep my eyes on the live tennis. Is that going to somehow change the trajectory of what I want to happen in that match? Because Tiafo has a great opportunity to leave Cincinnati with his first Masters 1000 title. And I think that would be amidst a very tough season for him. That would be, that would feel very, very sweet. Us thinner be, winning it. Yeah, that would be, it, it would be insane. sweet and insane. <laughs> yeah, it would be sweet would be and insane. insane. He'd, he'd have to beat one of the form players of the freaking year. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I'd love to see it, but I mean, if Center does it, he continues having a really, really amazing 2024. But Tiafo, I mean, the list of winners in the last, just in, the, in, the, in this decade alone of men who have kind of, not even kind of, men who have lifted Masters 1000 trophies, and you're like, kind of, where did that come from? That list is growing. Popperin just did it last week. We have Pablo Carina Busta, Alexi Popperin, Cam Nori, Borna Chorich. Um, Holger Runa to a certain extent when he won Paris indoors. I don't see why with that list of players you can't add in Francis Tiafo, but he has to go out there and play the tennis to win it. So. With the exception of Holger Runa, they weren't playing the number one player in the world. True, 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 true. I mean, true. okay, okay. Djokovic wasn't number one when Runa beat. Was it one it's, it's, still, it's still Djokovic, though, yeah. <laughs> yeah it's, but it's Djokovic, yeah. And like he was yeah. kind of handicapped because he couldn't play some of the season. So, um, I think that, um, yeah, I think that's the thing that Francis is going to go in because, like, Sinner probably shouldn't have won that match against Zverev. Um, yeah. But he somehow pulled it out of the bag. And now I'm thinking he's quite dangerous. I mean, I like you. I love Francis. I, I really would love to see Francis with a 1,000 title. I'm just very pessimistic that this is the opportunity that he's – that this is a big enough opportunity for him, not because of anything that he's going to do, because he's a big match player and he's going to bring mm-hmm. it on a big stage in a final against the best in the world. We saw that against Alcaraz and Flushing Meadows two years ago in the semis of the US Open. But I do wonder whether, like in Flushing Meadows, Meadows Yannick Sinner might have just a little bit too much extra. Yeah, there's there's some things going against him in this match against center, no doubt. Like, center is the overall better tennis player, especially if we just look at this season, right? But Tiafo does have a win over center uh, in the not so... It, it's, it's been a while. It was 2021 Vienna. But part of the reason that that whole match turned around for Francis is because he was able to use the crowd. He'll be in Cincinnati, which is not his hometown, but there's a lot of Tiafo fans that are going to be in that building. So maybe there's some magic that can happen with Tiafo, the crowd, and playing center once again when they're squarely on his side. So it's going to be an interesting watch for sure. I'm just nervous that I feel like if my eyes are watching it, <laughs> it's going to ruin all of the potential magic. So I'm I'm going to sit here and pray about it, I guess. <laughs> I mean, look, I I feel similarly when I, I try not to do eager streams on the matches because um, I feel like she's lost more times when I've commentated on her than she's won. Although actually, I think if I go back and think about it, probably not. But um, I, I, after the Roland Garros final in 23 that I did, I was like, nope, <laughs> I don't think I would be able to effectively contribute to this moment. Um, uh, let's just say, let's just say that talking tennis, I'm grateful that talking tennis um, allowed me the platform to come on and do these live streams when they did, which was WTA Finals 2022, which effectively is post Serena Williams' career. If you guys had asked me to to, <laughs> to live stream oh some God. Serena Williams matches, yeah, yeah, I <laughs> can't say can't. I'd, I'd be a little beside myself. <laughs> yeah, so there you go. There's, Fun. There's some- it'd be it'd be interesting, but I'd be beside myself. <laughs> Some lessons learned here. Well, we wish Francis all the best against Yannick. Um, uh, yeah, later, um, uh, that's going to happen. Uh, there will be someone bringing us that match. I'm not 100% who yet, but hey, maybe we can make it a surprise, um, uh, for when it happens. Um, 
And good news, Nerlan can finally talk to us again, which is fantastic. Um, so uh, <laughs> that's a great that's a great high point for us to end the stream on. Um, so, all right, Miles, thank you so much for making this uh, such a very pleasant experience of watching a tennis match. Always fun talking to you, Nick. Love when we can talk about some good old WGA tennis. Thanks again for our producer and talking tennis for allowing us the platform. And thank you guys for engaging in the chat and the comments. Always fun to see what you guys are talking about and joke and, and watch tennis with you guys. Always fun. Always, always fun. Well, I think I've given you a bit of a preview of what's coming next. Um, if you like the sound of that and you are new, hit the subscribe button so you get notified of when we were going live for the men's final later and when we have WTA Weekly tomorrow, ATP Weekly some point this week, and we will be doing all kinds of US Open build-up uh, on the show, um, which I think will be very exciting. We'll probably have draw reactions. We'll be doing full ATP and WTA previews. And then we will be bringing you live commentaries and watch-alongs from, uh, well, not directly from, but a lot, but we, here to, we're here to watch the US Open with you guys. So we are fully, fully gearing up for Grand Slam season. Let's get Cincinnati out of the way first. So I'll see you in another stream soon. Um, but in the meantime, take care and keep talking tennis. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you hit that like button. Don't forget to subscribe and click that notification bell so you don't miss out on all things tennis.